forward. This order will lay out a, a, a blueprint, a path forward for DeKalb County as we move into what has been described as a new normal. Brad Shaw, our presiding officer, the members of our board of commissioners, as well as our elected officials on the federal, state, and local level for their ongoing leadership, vision, and direction. And most of all, I want to thank the employees of DeKalb County. Thousands of them are on the front lines as I speak who are continuing in the midst of an unprecedented economic and health crisis, continuing to provide quality service and outstanding customer service. So thank you so much for your service and also to acknowledge the 750,000 residents of DeKalb County, Georgia, who as we distance ourselves physically have literally come together uh, as a county uh, to work together to face the challenge that's been presented, to support those medical uh, frontline workers, the doctors and the nurses, those who are putting their lives on the line every day. Together, uh, we are rising to this challenge, and I have no doubt that we will overcome this challenge and emerge a healthier, stronger county. Today, uh, to speak specifically to this executive order, I want to first state categorically that this order does not conflict uh, with the order issued by Governor Kemp on April 20th. However, it does speak directly to what we must do uh, in DeKalb County to ensure that we mitigate the spread of COVID-19 and ultimately restore uh, economic prosperity to our county. Uh, this order uh, supplements and I think provides valuable information and insight to those businesses and or individuals that can help us make the transition from being sheltered in place into a place in a time where we can get back to work and restore our economy. The CAVS decisions up until this point have played a key role, I this think, thing. in mitigating as much as possible the spread of this disease. And I want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Samuel Ford specifically our district health director, who has provided not just medical, but just outstanding leadership uh, during this crisis for DeKalb County and as interim director of Fulton County, uh, we would not have made the progress we are making without Dr. Ford and her staff at the DeKalb Board of Health. Thank you so much. Uh, what we will do today is talk briefly about what the path forward means. And consequently, I will ask, I will urge, I will advise, I will implore, I'll literally beg, if necessary, to ensure that citizens in DeKalb County remain safe, that those who may become infected or exposed to the infection get access to the medical services they need to restore their health, and to also support our businesses men and women who've invested their lives, their careers, and their fortune to create and maintain prosperous businesses. We must not forget, this is a two-pronged crisis. As we address the health issues, we must not forget that we must do everything we can to support the businesses and for those who create jobs and the jobs create opportunity for employees to support themselves and their families. The path forward will maintain the mitigation efforts that have already taken place. Uh, we want to encourage people that even as uh, we flatten the curve, uh, we cannot uh, become confident or overly comfortable and, and, and walk away from the strategies that have benefited us up until this point. Uh, curving the spread will require us to wear masks. Uh, I'm urging, encouraging, advising, imploring begging and, and praying that anytime any DeKalb County resident venture out into public, he or she will cover her face. And the covering is there to protect others if you may, number one, have the virus. And what science has taught us is that a significant percentage of our citizens are asymptomatic, i.e. they've been infected with the COVID germ, but they're showing no symptoms. Wearing a mask, protects others, it protects your family members, and helps to mitigate the spread. 
uh, for all residents also. We ask you to continue to become familiar with and to follow very closely the recommendations of the uh, CDC uh, here at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We're proud that the CDC, the preeminent uh, health organization in the world, is located here in DeKalb County. We can show our appreciation for this wonderful, wonderful institution by following the guidelines, the directions, and the information that's provided to us and to people all around the world. A second point, business uh, workers who will be returning to work. If business owners decide or uh, make the decision to reopen uh, under the governor's order, we are asking that those business owners and those employees follow the directions outlined in the governor's office, but we ask them also uh, urge them and encourage them to take additional steps. One key step that has really, really helped the DeKalb County government that we implemented some 30 days before uh, the first executive order was issued is that if, as an employee, you find or see persons in violation of the governor's executive order, that you will report those violations. And we'll share the 1-800 number uh, with you uh, before the end of this press conference. Be vigilant. If you see something, say something. The CAP residents who are over the age of 65 who reside in nursing homes or long-term care facilities and who are medically fragile should follow all recommendations of the CDC as well as any recommendations made by the governor and or by this government. Uh, clearly, we must do more and continue to be vigilant, we know that a disproportionate number of the fatalities uh, that have been the result of COVID-19 have occurred in nursing homes and long-term care facilities. But here to the from businesses that are opening, please, please follow the guidelines delineated in the governor's uh, order. But also, there are nine additional steps that we would like to offer to those businesses and employees who will find themselves at work uh, beginning tomorrow and in the near future. Uh, we are asking employers to require their workers to report when a member or his or her household is exhibiting signs of illness, particularly flu-like symptoms. Uh, that's a, 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 a request that we made to our employees. Uh, that's an expectation that we continually remind our employees that if you are in a household and if you are caring for someone, even if you don't show symptoms, but if you are caring for someone who does exhibit flu-like symptoms, you should report this to your employer and you should not present yourself at work. Uh, second, uh, we would ask employers who are reopening to consider implementing frontline pay for the period of time that the state of Georgia is under a declaration of emergency. Offering men and women, and we know, by the way, that our brave police and fire and other first responders are frontline workers. I'm proud that in DeKalb County, we were the first jurisdiction to, to offer and provide a frontline enhanced pay for our frontline workers not just those in public safety, but also our sanitation workers, watershed, some members of code enforcement and other departments. Very proud of that. For employers who are placing their employees in high risk of exposure, we are encouraging those employers to also provide enhanced pay for those men and women who are providing critical services in our community. We must focus on enhanced communication uh, between employers and employees and the community. Uh, enhanced protocols are also important. I've been very proud of the fact that many of our major employers, essential employers that have remained open in the cab county, grocery stores and others, uh, uh, automobile shops, we've noticed quite frankly that they have implemented enhanced cleaning protocols. And we would ask that no matter where you are in DeKalb County, if you 
or reopening your business or continuing to operate your business, you will implement immediately these protocols, sanitizing doorknobs, uh, making sure that when bathrooms are used, public restrooms, that you will take the time to go in and desanitize those each time they are used. You can't just rely on cleaning your bathroom once a day. The regulations, the guidelines suggest that you clean those and sanitize those restrooms after each use. Consider also expanding employee leave policies to encourage workers who are sick and need care for a sick family member to remain at home. The reality is many of our workers uh, become infected, they become ill, but because of socioeconomic realities, they are forced to go to work. They are forced to present themselves, even when they exhibit signs, back into the workplace with easily, as you can see, would increase the spread of COVID-19. So we ask employers to be mindful of that and do not force workers who are ill or caring for a sick relative or family member to come to work. For businesses that serve uh, DeKalb residents who are age 65 or older or reside in a nursing home, uh, consider additional and more frequent disinfection and cleaning of your entire premise. That is so important. Follow the recommendations and guidance issued by the State Board of Georgia Boards of, um, of, the, of Workers who have licenses to operate beauty, supply, uh, beauty shops as well as barbershops. Uh, included in the executive order is a link to very specific guidelines. I was very encouraged by the decisions that were taken by the State Cosmetology Board on yesterday and by boards overseeing barbers and, and other services emphasizing the importance of maintaining highly sanitized condition, maintaining a socially distanced uh, beauty parlor or barbershop. So please, we encourage our facilities and businesses that are determining or deciding to reopen, follow these guidelines. And we are encouraging the Chaos Police Department who've been empowered through the governor's executive order to be vigilant. Uh, we have no desire to arrest people or incarcerate people, but we will be vigilant to ensure that the guidelines are being followed. Finally, on a broader scale, uh, we are encouraging uh, our own DeKalb Health Department, along with the State Department of Health, with the support we hope of Governor Kemp and our General Assembly, as well as our delegation. We want to create a plan to address the underlying causes that have led to a disproportionate infection rate among the African-American community, communities of color, and other socially disadvantaged uh, individuals. We must take the first step to number one, to mitigate and defeat COVID-19, but we cannot grow weary in our good doings. Our next strategy, our next priority must be to invest in a long-term strategy that eliminates the, the idea and the reality that people of color will be disproportionately impacted and consequently lose their lives. I was speaking with the DeKalb Municipal Association last night. We had a great meeting and I appreciate the support and the cooperation and communication we have with our municipal leaders. But one of the things that came out of that discussion and that I uh, emphasize is that there is no genetic connection between COVID-19 and people who are African-American or people who are of an African-American descent. The issues that is driving this infection are underlying, such as obesity, uh, hypertension, those issues. So what we must do is reduce the incidences of those illnesses in our community. I encourage our state, our local, the leaders, 
our medical practitioners, policymakers to come together. There is no logical reason or excuse for the horrible toll of death that is occurring in Southwest Georgia around Doherty County. There is no rational, logical reason for these things to exist in the greatest, most prosperous nation in the world. Finally, I will ask the commissioners, the members of the DeKalb COVID-19 Task Force, our legislators, municipal leaders, our congressional members in the House and the Senate, and especially the leadership at our DeKalb Board of Health, Dr. Ford and her staff, to come together. On yesterday, it was announced that DeKalb that received some $132.5 million uh, in federal stimulus dollars. Uh, it was through the formula. Although the money has not yet been received, it's been determined that we will receive this much, much needed resource. We must invest in stopping COVID-19 in its tracks, but we also must invest in preventing future pandemics from coming into our community and destroying lives and destroying our way of life. So thank you once again. I want to share with you the state coronavirus hotline. If you see something, say something. We are very serious about ensuring that the citizens of DeKalb County the business owners of DeKalb County, the employees working in DeKalb County will follow the mandates issued by Governor Kemp and also voluntarily follow the suggestions offered through this executive order by myself. But if they are those who seek not to follow these guidelines, call 844-442-2681. We are serious in our commitment to protecting the lives of the Cap County residents. I thank you so much for your attention. More importantly, I thank you for your commitment to ensuring that we protect life, that we do everything possible to return our county, our beautiful county, uh, back to a place of vigor, of health, and economic prosperity. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the media? Uh, yes, this is Tyler Eastup from the AJC. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can. sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Thurmond, um, obviously, as you alluded to many times, this is um, from the from the county level. This is a recommendation and an urging and a imploring. Um, are you hopeful that the that folks in DeKalb County will take these additional additional measures? I'm certain that they will. And oftentimes when I talk to my uh, staff and employees, and particularly when I'm talking to young leaders, uh, one of the things I always emphasize is that positional power is the weakest form of influence. Uh, influence has nothing to do with power or executive orders, is that by leading and setting an example of doing the right thing, and managing the politics later, I'm certain that we will help people make better decisions. I've talked to faith leaders uh, just in my own conversations over the last few days. Uh, even though the governor's executive order uh, allows uh, houses of worship to reopen, the ministers and, and, and pastors I've talked to have decided to remain closed, to continue to worship remotely. So what we are asking our citizens to do is simply do the right thing. Do not take chances and take every cautionary step to protect yourself, your family, your neighbors, your friends from the spread of this virus. And the governor's order preempts local leaders from issuing emergency orders. And that's not something to be debated. He's made the decision, but he does not exempt local leaders from demonstrating leadership he does not exempt local leaders from encouraging people to do the right thing 
and to make good decisions. And he does not exempt local leaders like myself and my fellow board of commissioner from being concerned and focused on doing everything we can to protect uh, the citizens uh, that we serve on a daily basis. Tyler, do you have any additional questions? Oh, uh, you, you made a point of including in this um, order a, um, a reference and a request to uh, address the, the racial disparities. Um, what have you seen on in, in DeKalb County, which is obviously um, a, a large portion of black, black residents, um, what have you seen at the DeKalb level in terms of infection rates and what do you think can be done to um, address that on, on the county level? Uh, great question. I think you may have seen the um, map that Dr. Ford mm -hmm, uh, presented mm -hmm. and showed by zip code where you had the greatest incidences of infection. Well, you know South DeKalb just as well as I do. Uh, mm -hmm. You can look at the zip code and you can see uh, where we've had uh, increased number of infections uh, based on Department of Health data. So that mm -hmm. is evidence enough. And also the partial data that's been collected uh, in recent weeks by the, the uh, State Department of Health showed that there is some disproportionality in terms of African Americans. But one of the things I hasten to add is very important that policymakers and political leaders and our citizens recognize something. And I stated earlier, I restated, there's no genetic predisposition to be infected uh, by COVID-19. So it's really not race. It's these other factors, mm -hmm. primarily socioeconomic ones. And one of the one that one of the key drivers is you look at the men and women who are working in the jobs that are, have the greatest. Uh, exposure or risk of exposure, and there is a disproportionate number of African Americans in those jobs. And because of their socioeconomic status and because of their job description, they're not able to shelter in place. Uh, I was standing this morning uh, in my office in my home, it was yesterday, uh, sheltered in place, conducting the affairs of DeKalb County, and I was staring out the window, and um, the sanitation truck came by and there were two men on the back and one man driving. You can't remotely collect sanitation and garbage. But consequently, in the process of doing it, you increase the risk that you may be exposed. And if you look at our sanitation crew who are doing a phenomenal job in the face of this crisis, the great majority of the men and women working in sanitation are African American. All right, if there are no more questions, that concludes our news conference. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for coming, Tyler. Thank you.